subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonsom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 2nd of November. Prime Minister Modi launches India-led initiative to boost infrastructure in small island nations. Thousands rush into Afghanistan as Chaman border crossing reopens. And People across India throng markets to buy gold and utensils on a species Hindu festival Dhanteras. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday launched the initiative for the resilient island states for developing infrastructure of small island nations during the COP26 climate change summit in Glasgow. PM Modi said it gives a new hope. a new confidence and satisfaction of doing something for the most vulnerable countries he later also held bilateral meetings with several world leaders attending the climate conference indian prime minister narendra modi on tuesday launched the initiative for the resilient islands for developing infrastructure of small island nations on the second day of the cop 26 climate change summit in glasgow in the united kingdom co-hosted by Australia and the UK the Iris launch event saw participation of prime ministers of Fiji, Jamaica and Mauritius the countries that are likely to benefit from this initiative PM Modi stated that the small island developing states face the biggest threat from climate change and said India space agency ISRO will build a special data window for them to provide them timely information about cyclones coral reef monitoring coastline monitoring etc through satellite climate change se sabse adhik khatra small island developing states seeds ko hai ye unke liye jeevan mrityu ki baat hai ye unke astitva ke liye chunauti hai climate change ki wajah se aayi aapdaye unke liye sachmuch pralay ka roop le sakti hai aise deshon ke क्लाइमेट चेंज न सिर्फ उनके जीवन की सुरक्षा के लिए बल्कि उनकी अर्थव्यवस्था के लिए भी बड़ी चुनौती है द इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर लेटर इन द डे आल्सो हेल्ड सेपरेट बायलैटरल मीटिंग्स विद वर्ल्ड लीडर्स इंक्लूडिंग हिज काउंटर पार्ट्स फ्रॉम नेपाल इजराइल एंड यूक्रेन एंड आल्सो माइक्रोसॉफ्ट को फाउंडर बिल गेट्स earlier on monday in a national statement at the cop26 modi announced 2070 as the target for his country to reach net zero carbon emissions he stated india would increase the share of renewables in its energy mix from about 38% last year to 50% by 2030 at least 15 people were killed and 34 wounded when two explosions followed by gunfire hit afghanistan's biggest military hospital sardar mohammad daud khan in kabul a taliban security official said on tuesday the number of casualties is expected to rise there was no immediate claim of responsibility but the official bakhtar news agency quoted witnesses saying a number of islamic state fighters entered the hospital and clashed with security forces moving on thousands of people rushed into afghanistan through chaman border crossing with pakistan on tuesday as it reopened after a nearly month long closure Chaman border crossing the second largest commercial border point between the two countries reopened after talks between the Afghan and Pakistan governments Pakistan media reported the crossing a vital source of customs revenue for the cash strapped government in Afghanistan was originally closed by Pakistani authorities due to security threats disputes over issues ranging from covid-19 to the validity of afghan travel documents have prevented the reopening of the chaman crossing despite severe hardships to truckers and local farmers in late october hundreds of traders in pakistan protested the border's closure by blocking a local highway as afghanistan sinks deeper into economic crisis neighboring countries have been increasingly worried about a mass movement of refugees 
Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has defended the agreement between his government and the Bank Tehreek e Labbaik Pakistan Party as the only viable option left to defuse tensions amicably, as it warded off further bloodshed. However, leaders of opposition parties have termed the deal as surrendered by the state and demanded its details should be made public. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan during a meeting of the ruling PTI's core committee on Monday said the agreement between his government and the proscribed Islamist group Tehreek-e-Labaik Pakistan or TLP was the only viable option left to defuse tensions amicably, saying the move warded off further bloodshed. The Sunday's pact, the details of which remained under wraps, came after around two weeks of clashes that left at least seven policemen dead and scores injured on both sides. Thousands of TLP supporters had launched a march from Lahore towards capital Islamabad on October 22 to press for the release of their imprisoned leader Saad Hussain Rizvi and demand the expulsion of the ambassador of France for the publication of a series of caricatures depicting Islam's prophet Muhammad in a French satirical magazine, which Muslims consider blasphemous. Meanwhile, leaders of the opposition Pakistan People's Party or PPP have termed the agreement a surrender by the state. PPP Vice President Sherry Rehman questioned the government over the secrecy around the deal and asked to make it public. The government had earlier rejected the expulsion demand, saying that such an action would isolate Pakistan internationally. The National Security Committee had also vowed to crack down hard on the banned TLP if violent protests continued. Moving on, Gilgit Baltistan's former Chief Minister Hafiz Hafizur Rahman has slammed Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan's ruling PTI government for failing to control inflation, which has made the lives of the people in the illegally occupied region extremely difficult. In recent days, a series of protests have also been held by locals and opposition parties in the region against the rising poverty and unemployment. Raising deep anguish over unprecedented inflation, Gilgit Baldistan's former Chief Minister and opposition PMLN leader Hafiz Hafizur Rahman has slammed Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan's ruling PTI government for failing to control the frequent price rise. A series of protests have continued in Gilgit Baldistan against the rise in poverty, unemployment and inflation which has made the lives of people in illegally occupied region miserable. In a protest led by Rahman, demonstrators also raised voices against the high cost of the liquid petroleum gas or LPG cylinder which has gone up to Rs 2,600. They expressed they want to get rid of the tyrannical government as soon as possible. According to the latest report by Statistics Bureau, Pakistan's annual consumer price index or CPI inflation rate increased to 9.19% in October. Prices of food items like chicken, vegetables, wheat, tea and cooking oil caused a rise in the inflation, the Bureau said. Afghans are worried of worsening economic situation and the spread of poverty as most people live below the poverty line since the Taliban takeover in August. An Afghan bird vendor, who is worried about dwindling business, hopes the United Nations would step in with broader help. Mir Abdulaziz is one among the vendors in the Kafaroshi bird market in capital Kabul's old city that sell finches, logs and petridges to other Afghans. But like many other markets, he said, business has slumped since the Taliban takeover in mid-August. Aziz on Monday said he was worried about dwindling business since the Taliban takeover and that he hoped the United Nations would step in with broader help. 
20 سال سے بیاد کو دس جنگ کردن جنگ کردن آمدن تار گرائی سی جمہوری وقت کی را جامعہ جہانی مردم امسایہ افغانستان کسی کب افغانستان دل سوز است کسی کب افغانستان کمک میکنه وقتی که او ای را قبول نکنه و نشناشه از روی چی ماش بتاسای با روز اونمو دوره سیاه سابقه گذشته از یا صاحب کنمه تو مردم با شلاق بزن و مردم با شلاق بزن و مردم قصاص کو مردم حق و ناق صاحب پشتشان به اینمی ارتباط یا را مردم نمیخواید The Afghan people are suffering from growing inadequacy of food and clothing as grain prices have kept soaring due to the freezing of Afghanistan's bank assets by the United States. And as winter sets in, the situation could worsen. The Taliban has called on the United States and other countries to recognize their government in Afghanistan, saying that a failure to do so and the continued freezing of Afghan funds abroad would lead to problems not only for the country but for the world. No country has formally recognized the Taliban government since the insurgents took over the country in August, while billions of dollars in Afghan assets and funds abroad have also been frozen, even as the country faces severe economic and humanitarian crisis. At a time when many citizens have got the complete dose of COVID-19 vaccines and others are waiting for the second dose, subtugenarians in Nepal's Lalitpur are being inoculated with anti-pneumonia jabs. With the inoculation drive in progress, the Lalitpur metropolis has become the first local level in the country to vaccine its elderly population against pneumonia. Nepal's Lalitpur metropolitan city is inoculating people above the age of 70 with anti-pneumonia vaccine PCV-13 at a time when many citizens have got the complete dose of COVID-19 vaccines and others are waiting for the second dose. The metropolis began the inoculation drive in multiple phases from Sunday, diving them into certain number of wards. With the inoculation drive in progress, the Lalitpur metropolis has become the first local level in the country to vaccine its elderly population against pneumonia. COVID ko time ma, ab vaccine lagaya, ab COVID batta bossa banana re banana hamla. Tholo bishas thiyo, oil pan bishas sa taro pneumonia le pan teri sa taro sa banana re banana kule dar lagi rahe ko thiyo. Taro oil ye vara vara bata pneumonia ko lagi pan ye. The anti-pneumonia vaccines to senior citizens are being provided on the basis of citizenship certificate and recommendation of the ward office. The metropolis plans to inoculate population in the age group of 70 to 73 years in second phase. Septua generians have expressed happiness after receiving the jabs amid the coronavirus pandemic. Pneumonia is caused by bacteria, viruses or fungi and leaves children fighting for breath as their lungs fill with pus and fluid. It is the biggest single killer of children as well as elderly. Jewellery showrooms across parts of India witnessed a surge in gold buyers on Tuesday on the occasion of Dhantira's festival, which is considered auspicious for purchasing valuable items, especially gold and utensils. Tanteras also marks the beginning of celebrations of Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights, which is India's biggest and the most important holiday of the year. Jewelry showrooms across India were seen buzzing with customers to purchase gold and gold-made ornaments on the occasion of Dhantera's festival on Tuesday. Dhantera's, which falls two days before Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights, is the country's busiest gold buying day as it is considered auspicious to buy precious metals and utensils. People on the occasion also buy gold coins with engrossed pictures of Lord Ganesh, the Hindu god of knowledge, and the goddess of wealth Lakshmi, the prominent deities who are worshipped on Diwali. बहुत सालों से ये कल्चर बिल्ड हुआ है अभी घर पे कि हर दिन तेरे इसको गोल्ड लेना चाहिए तो प्राइस के इंडिपेंडेंटली वैसे भी मेरी मम्मी बोलते रहते कि थोड़ा सा तो गोल्ड दो ही अब आज सस्ता भी हो गया है थोड़ा तो इट्स लाइक आइसिंग ऑन द केक मीनवाइल इन इंडिया के वेस्ट बंगाल स्टेट पीपल वे सीन स्ट्रॉंगिंग 
Similar scenes were witnessed in India's Uttar Pradesh state, where people flocked to purchase earthen lamps and items of home decor. Diwali marks the return of Hindu Lord Rama to the city of Ayodhya after he defeated Ravana, the powerful demon king of Lanka. People decorate their homes with oil and electric lamps to mark the occasion and also celebrate by bursting firecrackers. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.